So the first question is, have you ever visited uh, Russia before? Yes, <laughs> uh, I, I came uh, to St. Petersburg uh, a very long time ago. It was in 1969 uh, under uh, Brezhnev. Brezhnev was uh, newly elected and uh, it was uh, under the Soviet Union regime. And uh, I was very really impressed by St. Petersburg. It was in the winter, in, Decem in December and January. And uh, I mean, the buildings and their color were really extraordinary uh, because there was snow and uh, water was uh, uh, frozen. So it was the contrast between <laughs> Uh, the winter and the buildings were so uh, fabulous that uh, I like St. Petersburg very much. And then I came back um, in 2012 or 13 because uh, I had been uh, uh, giving uh, had been giving lecture in uh, Novosibirsk and. Uh, I, uh, in the, uh, by the same occasion, I went to, to Moscow and to Leningrad and everything has changed. <laughs> and uh, have, uh, between 2012 or 13, and now there, there were big changes. Um, please, could you tell about your academic topics and the researches you're doing in the recent um, years? Uh, do you want the old history? Or? Yes. <laughs> uh, I was born in Canada, uh, so it was the, the 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 weather is very similar to to the weather here. Uh, the uh, winter are very long and very cold, and in my village, we have during two weeks uh, 30 or 50 below zero, <laughs> and it is very hard. So uh, I, uh, I went to the university uh, in Montreal. I do my master in Montreal, but at the time it was very difficult to do a doctorate in uh, Montreal. So I went to Paris and it was in 1968. And uh, my supervisor was in Nanterre. And uh, it was a woman. And uh, she uh, asked me not to come to the university because there were uh, every day uh, battle and manifestation between student and uh, policeman. So uh, I, instead of studying philosophy, my, um, my thesis was on the Timaeus. And instead of uh, studying philosophy, I went uh, to Paris, it called Pratique de Hautes Etudes, where you were, uh, where you, you went. Uh, and I uh, <coughs> studied under uh, Jean-Pierre Vernon, Pierre Vidal Naquet, and, uh, and uh, Marcel Detienne. I studied anthropology and sociology of the antiquity. So it makes all the difference between my paper and the, the main uh, interpretation, the, the, the standard main interpretation at the moment, because uh, in our domains, uh, philosophy means analytical philosophy and means logical and uh, logical and uh, philosophy of the ordinary language. But it is not the case for me. I'm interested in mythos. I'm interested in politics, I'm interested in sociology, rich and poor and things like that, in antiquity and in Plato, in antiquity in general and in Plato in particular. Uh, how um, the, now the state of studying of the ancient philosophy, um, is there a big um, period um, of uh, time being given for the antique studies or are they just passed as a historical uh, a type, stage? Yes, all depends. I mean, uh, in the university, uh, either in, in Canada, not in Canada, but in Quebec, because uh, Quebec is a province which is very different from the other provinces. It was 
Uh, it was French and Catholic. Now Catholicism has disappeared. <laughs> so it is French and the system is very similar to France. And so uh, uh, the, the, the philosophy of antiquity uh, is a part of uh, history. Uh, and so it's very difficult to, to, to see the difference between uh, history and philosophy. The, the history of philosophy and history, it's almost the same thing. Uh, in France, it is quite different between, because in, in Quebec, uh, the two main authors are Plato and Aristotle. In France, and you went to the Ecole Presidio d'Etude, uh, in the Ecole Pratique des Hautes Etudes, there is uh, two, uh, two branches, uh, philological and uh, history of religion. And uh, in that context, uh, uh, ph the philosophy of antiquity is much larger. I mean, it includes uh, the history of Platonism, Medio Platonism, and Neo Platonism because uh, the texts are not so uh, good as uh, Plato and uh, because uh, very rapidly philosophy in the antiquity uh, merged with uh, religious, uh, religion and theology. And that's why uh, in Neoplatonism uh, Plato's philosophy is a sort of scientific theology. <laughs> And uh, for the late Neoplatonism, they try to make uh, uh, a sort of uh, a sort of uh, link between the scientific theology by Plato and the, the ordinary theology. I mean, Orphism and Chaldean oracles and uh, the uh, the usual mythology you found in Asia than in uh, Homer. So it's, it is quite different. And so uh, I, I went from Plato, uh, because I directed uh, a translation of Plato's complete works, from Plato to Neoplatonism, because uh, in 1974 I was elected in CNRS, in a team working on Neoplatonism. And uh, that's why I, be uh, I became more and more interested in Neoplatonism. And now I'm working essentially on Plotinus. We have uh, a complete translation of the Enneads, Porphyry, Iamblichus, and now Proclus. Uh, imagine if you will have a possibility to change something in the system of the studying of antique philosophy. What will you add? What will you modify? Well, the, the, the problem now, uh, <laughs> and it is a sort of a general problem, the problem now is that uh, because uh, the English and the American uh, philosopher are uh, more uh, numerous and richer, <laughs> they impose an Aristotelian lecture of Plato and Platonism. And uh, I will try to uh, change the perspective going from uh, an analytical philosophy to the history and to the sociology of, uh, of uh, Platonism, or Plato, Platonism, and the other branch of philosophy, I mean Stoicism and uh, Epicureanism. I think that uh, you cannot uh, uh, reduce uh, Stoicism and Epicureanism to uh, logical analysis or to the analysis of the ordinary language. I think it is much more interesting than that, especially Stoicism and his relation with the Roman politics, something like that. Uh, and uh, what uh, do you think about the influence of ancient philosophy on modernity 
is it do you think it's useful to study antique philosophy for modern people and uh, yeah. <laughs> of course I'm sure you <laughs> say yes. when, I wa when I was young uh, I was told that uh, it was stupid to study uh, ancient philosophy because uh, I wouldn't be able to eat <laughs> and to have a family and uh, I think that it is the ordinary people reaction and I think it's not foolish and very interesting. But uh, if you uh, uh, put the problem on an other level, I think uh, the study of the past is very important because uh, with this uh, modern interpretation, with the analytical philosophy, we flatten everything on the same level. I mean, everything is reduced to the present. The, 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 and I think it is not a good thing because uh, it is uh, something uh, arrogant and, uh, <laughs> and you don't see what the future could be. Because if we are the best, we are uh, the, the end of the history, we are uh, I don't think it's it's right. I mean, we are just a moment in the history, and there, there was a lot of very interesting thing behind us. And if we want to have an interesting future, we have to understand that in the past there was something very very different, and I think that the future will be also very very different. And we we cannot stay in the present and say as I told, we are the best, nothing is going to change, and things like that. I think it's, it's not possible, and I think that the study of the past is the only way to, to, to think about the future very different from our present. Uh, could you tell about your presentation uh, in this conference? Uh, in the conference, my presentation was not really a presentation. I mean, uh, I, I wanted to explain what was uh, the what was uh, the, the, the the aim of the conference. It is a midterm. Uh, it does mean that uh, the the International Plato Society organize a symposium every three years. And in the middle, we have a meeting uh, to organize the next uh, symposium. The next symposium will be in Paris in 2019. So in my, uh, in my paper, uh, it, I, I try to explain what was the uh, International Plato Society, what were uh, its aim, what, uh, how it does function, and then I explain the team of the symposium in Paris, the Parmenides of uh, Plato, uh, and I try to explain, and that's why I've chosen this team, that uh, through the Parmenides of Plato, you have to take position on Parmenides, uh, some two centuries before, <laughs> uh, the, to interpret the, 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 the Parmenides of Plato, the dialogue, and uh, to understand what the uh, Platonist uh, did of this dialogue. Because the uh, Platonist, uh, uh, since uh, uh, Plotinus, find uh, in the second part of the Parmenides, this famous Plato scientific theology, <laughs> because the Parmenides is something, uh, the second part of the Parmenides is very difficult to understand. And so they use uh, this sort of enigma uh, to uh, develop uh, what they call the scientific theology. And so we have. Uh, a sort of very large uh, historical uh, span from the 6th century before to the 6th century after. <laughs> so 1,200 years 
of uh, philosophical uh, discussion. Uh, and I think on being on the one and for the late Neoplatonism, for the, uh, yes, on the, on the gods. And which are the plans for the International Plato Society? The plans, uh, your plans, your personal plans, except the symposium you mentioned. Are you planning any publications? Um, what are you preparing now in this moment? In the International Plato Society or myself? No, y yourself, all. yes, yourself, yes. The International Plato Society will publish the, the proceeding of the symposium. And myself, uh, now I'm quite <laughs> old now, uh, but uh, I uh, have uh, published, uh, not myself, but a team, uh, Plato, Plato's complete work. And I'm working for the moment for a new edition, uh, to uh, a revised edition. The same thing for uh, Plotinus. We have published the uh, all the Aeneid, and I'm going to. Uh, we are going to publish a revised edition. For Porphyry, uh, we are going to publish uh, one uh, new. Uh, uh, <coughs> edition, uh, translation and commentary of uh, a text. Uh, it is on uh, the cave of the nymph. It's a sort of uh, very strange uh, text, uh, which is an allegorical interpretation of uh, the last uh, song of the Odyssey. So <laughs> it's very strange. Uh, uh, the, 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 uh, the, there is a quite uh, a difficult passage at the end of the Odyssey, uh, where uh, Odyssey uh, hides himself in a cave near his city, and uh, Porphyry tried to see there the, 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 the way the souls uh, come from the uh, the intelligible to the sensible and get up to the intelligible. Something very strange, but very, very interesting. And now we are a, a team uh, working on the element of theology of Proclus. Uh, I mean, it's, uh, it's always the same thing for Proclus. Uh, Plato's philosophy is a scientific theology. And uh, in that uh, treatise, he tried to explain uh, how it works, going from the one um, to uh, the matter. And it is a very short uh, treatise, but it's, it is a sort of, uh, of uh, end book uh, for the old system. The old system in, is in the Platonic theology, which has been published uh, completely now after 1968. Can you wish uh, wish something to Russian colleagues? But, uh, I think uh, I was very impressed by um, by this new uh, review, and uh, I think it is very important because, uh, uh, as I told uh, you, I have published two articles in that review. And uh, the other articles are very, very interesting. And uh, so uh, I think that uh, the, the study of Plato uh, in, uh, in Russia is uh, in a very good <laughs> uh, way. And uh, there is also a translation, a new translation in Russian of the Parmenides. And I think it is very, very interesting <laughs> for us and for uh, and uh, the, 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 I came twice uh, to uh, Novosibirsk, uh, where uh, there were a sort of uh, seminar for um, people uh, teaching in the university in the old Federation of Russia. And uh, I give lecture on uh, Platonism and Neoplatonism. And I think that uh, Russia is more and more interesting in, in, uh, in the uh, philosophy of antiquity. And I think it is a very good thing for the reason I give to you. I mean, 
in order to understand the past, the future, you have to understand the past. Uh, in order to, we, to face the future, you have to understand the, the past. And I think that uh, Russia is, uh, in a way, uh, closely linked to uh, the history of uh, philosophy in the antiquity through, uh, through Byzantium, uh, who were, uh, was a, a very important center for the study of Aristotle and Plato. So the, I hope it's going to be uh, uh, open uh, now to discussion. Thank you. Thank you a lot.